Chris wave a little bit. Josh wave. That's the Billiard Factory family here in Jacksonville. So if you guys need anything, come see my wife. But uh, first of all, thank you so much for coming out. I really appreciate it. Uh, you know we're trying to work really hard on bringing more knowledge to the sport, uh, more knowledge uh, about the players, and we're very thankful that Mika Mika's here on his own today. We're obviously doing a private clinic tomorrow. Uh, that one's not free. But uh, today's clinic, he's kind of volunteered to come out and uh, show some stuff, share some time with you, which is uh, pretty top-notch. Uh, before I introduce him, I want to – I'm sure a lot of you already know a lot of his stats, who he is, what he's done, what he's accomplished. But I, I took a little excerpt from his uh, from his website that I wanted to read for those of you that maybe don't know everything that he's done. Uh, throughout the last decade, the billiard world has consistently heard the name Mika, the Iceman, eminent, associated and competing with the top players around the world, and for good reason. He's uh, toiled tirelessly to become the number one player in the world. Even uh, earlier this, I'm sorry, even this early in his career, it's safe to say that he's one of uh, Billiard's all-time greats. And he really is. Uh, player of the year, two years running. Player of the decade, voted by Billiard's Digest. Uh, Two-time consecutive U.S. Open Nine Ball champion, which is probably something that most of us here know about. That was in 08 and 09. Uh, and he has the desire, the drive, and the work ethic, which is proven by being here today, sharing some time with you, uh, to, to bring this great sport to the next level. Uh, if you go to his Wikipedia page, or not his page, but Wikipedia, and look up uh, Mika's stats, you're going to see that he has over 20 uh, championship titles to his name. So that's pretty strong. And currently ranked, I mean, it fluctuates week to week. I didn't even look what it was this week, but last week it was ranked uh, 16 in the world. And you know, when I always tell you guys what somebody's ranked, like if I'm talking about Thorsten or somebody else, I always like to really accentuate the fact that we're talking about not in the U.S., you know, not in this hemisphere. We're talking about in the whole world. So it's unbelievable. Just think about the people, how many people are in this room and realize this guy's in the top, the top of the uh, creme de la creme. So, uh and I have a list of his championship awards if you want to know what they are. But anyway, I don't want to take any time away. Uh, Mika's going to do, just to let you know our format, he's going to do a small clinic here where he'll you know, show you a couple tips and tricks or some things that he's kind of honed his skills on over the years or what kind of helped him you know, step up to that next level. Uh, we talked about him. Mean, he'll probably pick a volunteer out of the audience for a little bit of a challenge match. He'll try not to tear up on you too badly, but he'll use that as kind of a demonstration of you know maybe how to approach certain shots, uh, what to do, what to think about, maybe give you something else, uh, give you a different viewpoint that maybe you wouldn't have seen. Then uh, so we're going to do that until five, and then at five we're going to do a Q and A session. So we do a Google Hangout. We did it last time with Ralph Eckert. It went really well. Where some people submitted some uh, some questions online, and I'll repeat the questions, but we'll also take questions here locally. So start thinking about that over the next hour as well. All right, so without further ado, please uh, help me welcome Mika Eminem. support for billiards and professional players in general. So uh, I don't know who wants to uh, volunteer. I thought about, uh, you know, maybe I could play a few racks out and I'll you know, explain what I'm doing at the same time. And then, you know, do we still have the champion from the tournament here? Or? Yeah. Bobby's here. Maybe, you know, maybe he's a worthy challenge. Bobby's here? Thorsten's here? Oh, he's right there. One of the top players in the world. Also, Thorsten Holman. Get out there, Bobby. 
situation I might play safe. Um, this is not a, not a really good outs here, but uh, I'm going to play a little bit more aggressive today and maybe go for the bank, the chance to bank in the five. Let's see how it goes. And got shade too. To play another combination here. Look for my position and then generally approaching the table, you want to take a few steps back and then uh, then go into the shot. Kind of like uh, I see uh, some a lot of players are kind of hovering too close to the table and you know trying to make up their mind. And once they do, they kind of like swing back and do this like a back kick into the position. So I think that's a bad habit. It doesn't give you a lot of perspective, a lot of it's kind of a bad dimension to approach the shot. So always think of like stepping into it rather. So uh, my uh, for a right-handed player, the foundation is the right leg, and I put more, more most of the weight on the right leg. Say maybe uh, sixty percent or something like that. And then also in that regard, the uh, the right leg is also being the foundation. It's like closest to your uh, <laughs> the balance points, the balance, uh, you know, since 60% of the weight goes on the right foot or more, then uh, it makes sense that the cue is, you know, near that same uh, position, you know, just above it. And then your the, the eyesight should be also along with the cue. So the hip kind of moves out of the way when you go down, just like this. I'm choosing the right leg first, and that's the, the foundation and then I go into the shot and the cue goes in the straight line where I'm aiming at this point. So I'm aiming actually before I'm going down. So I'm going to make this a lengthy introduction into this thing, but I'll remind people as I go along. So I'm aiming from here. Once I go down, I don't have to aim because I already did it by doing this pre-shot routine. And that's a big thing. So once you're down there, you just relax and then you just kind of deliver the message that you had in your about the shot, what's happening. So I make every decision from here, and then when I'm down there, I'm always focused on getting the right action on the cue ball. Would be really embarrassing to miss that one. <laughs> well, that's all. <laughs> so I got pretty good on the uh, the combination. I chose to try to get on the straight line. Problem with this is the two balls. And, uh, you know, you have to control ball falls. And uh, what I'm thinking, if I follow, I might get a nice little double kiss with a two. 
So once it bounces out of the rail, the cue ball will come and play a little. Uh, I'm trying to get the two ball in the same corner as the eight. So let's see how that works out. Well, I did touch it, but uh, we'll it and I still have shape. <coughs> and, okay. Generally speaking, the better to play with object balls, the shorter distance to the pocket, the easier it should be. Sometimes you're forced to take the shots in the longer, depending on the situation. So, uh, I'm still going to go up here. I like the position of the four from this area. So I'll try to play a little stun shot. A little more. A little bit more English than I intended, but still uh, on the right track, I guess. Now we'll play like a extreme draw shot for a little right in English, which transfers into like coming from that direction, it's going to be left. So uh, once it, you know, you draw into a rail, it reverses the English because, you know, the rotation of the ball. So uh, we can come in this angle. What's the four ball? This okay. And so, good shape. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, coming across here, the nine ball is a little funny. It's in the middle of the table. And it's kind of uh, disturbing the ideal path of the cue ball. But I, I think I can get down here and then use the rail and then come here. So, use a little top spin just to uh, change the angle coming out of the rail. If you play a stun shot, you know, it's going to go just right across. So, let's get a little natural, natural top, natural pull. And uh, I wanted a little bit more angle, but I'm still. It's on the right side. Now I've got a couple options here. I can stun really hard and then come. Using this rail and then a little bit spin on towards here, which is, you know, it's an okay angle, considering the lines there. So everything's a little bit, you have to think ahead. One angle you're playing for the next shot, and what's the next shot after that, and so forth. So uh, I like the simplicity of this position rather than coming over here. And it's better to approach the angle of position instead of going across it. So if I played on this side, of the seven, I'm going to cross the line of the ideal path. That's like a good area here where, where I'd like to be, but it's not ideal from this position, being with my nine is there too. So uh, I'm going to stun here and then a little bit left English to uh, make the angle come out a little bit uh, longer. Boy, the side pocket. I thought about saying that, you know. Something, something. It's the last thing on your mind is exactly what's going to happen. So. That was a complete mental error. What are you going to do, Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you just see me do this? Yeah. <laughs> hey, you just saw you that. You did it to you. Yeah, that's fine. Good shot. I have a little bit too much. I might have put a little bottom on that when I shot the six ball. That's why it didn't take the tangent line. Yeah. 
Does everybody understand the concept of the tangent line? When I'm explaining it, it's like the 90 degree angle from the direction of the shot. So if you put center ball, if the, if the cue ball's not sliding forward or there's no draw on it, it means it's like dead when it contacts the ball, it'll take that tangent line always. So it's a pretty handy little thing to have. So when you do your warm up stuff, you want to like kind of try to gauge what distance is good for you know certain stop shot, and then you know if you're closer to the ball, it's easier to play that stop shot. But if you're really far away, it's a little a little bit of a draw because that draw is eventually con converting into a rolling straight into that same direction. So, wow, that's great. And position. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I was just swinging this banana. That's how bad I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby got that bad habit from me. I'm faced with a similar shot. In the earlier rack, I had the three ball. I had to draw it with the right spin. This is straight in. I'm going to do the same thing. Get around here. And I Sometimes it's good to think it over, you know, just you can not normally I wouldn't do it out loud like this, but <laughs> generally speaking, it's nice to visualize the thing and seeing it seeing it happen before it happens. It's kind of a confirmation that you know it's possible, right? So you know, to, gotta do what the table gives me. Some more shots. Or well, maybe scuff the tip. Yeah, I, I actually have some some more. I should have used the measure. Now I got to explain this. <laughs> <laughs> it's all kinds out. <laughs> so I'm faced with a kick shot. I'm probably gonna have to look at the easiest way to approach is like this rail here. Um, there's a couple of different ways to aim for this kind of a kick shot. One of them is like uh, you know, choosing the point where you want to hit the ball. And then you extend the extend the cue backwards, so it kind of doubles the distance, and then you just get like a mirror, a point where you can mirror the uh, spot on the wall. This rail here. If you remember when you measure, the uh, playing area doesn't really end at the rail; it ends where the base of the ball would be at when hitting the rail. So a lot of people have misconceptions. That you know you have to measure it from the point, the rail. But you have to measure it from this. <coughs> you see the track, you know, where the ball really. That's the furthest point the ball can go. So you measure it from here and then double the distance. So you take a. Just for example, you know, 
this part here as the the plane surface ends from ball, right? There's a ball. So I have to measure it from there. When you go uh, through the rail. It's a little detail. But you want to be accurate on that. That way you can learn how the cushions are reacting. And then I'll put like a golf ball here. So I'm trying to imagine the middle of the cue ball being at this position. I want to hit this side. So get really uh, technical. And then I go put the tip on the same spot where the plane surface ends. And then you pick, figure out this spot here. So then this is going to go a little bit to the right of the diamond. Now remember that spot. Walk to the other side. And you have to hit this kind of firm just to get that bounce, the mirror reflection out of the rail. If I play a soft coming to this angle, actually it's going to go too long unless I you know, put a little action on the cue ball. Because uh, from, from this angle, the uh, cushion slides more. So it doesn't really get the natural spring from the rail, which happens, you know, if it, if coming at this angle, you can expect like a, a true bounce. But this angle, it almost uh, gets like a 60% of the bounce. So if you hit slow on this shot, you aim at the point that you just measured, if you hit it soft, it's going to miss completely. So, also, I have to consider the cue ball action. So, let's try to make it in the corner. I mean, I got, I don't have any easy safeties either. And the nine balls there, you know, who knows? Something funny could happen. <laughs> it could go off the nine, or I could flip the nine. I mean, that's all I got right now. So similar approach, you know, just like I'm aiming at a target. Wow, that's really near the line. Yeah. See right. that? Yeah. Positive thinking. <laughs> then, oh, I'm out of safety. I'm going to be jammed up with this one. Yeah. Scratchy. <laughs> It's okay, I have to explain this. <laughs> a little bit more. Now you gotta go a little bit more by feel. I'm so close to the rail. So, uh, or, yeah. Let's see what I can do. Maybe I can kick it in. But I just wanna be a little close to the six. So, you know, put it on that side. So, so close to the ball here. Well, let's see if we can see the background. Yep. Maybe this is the best option now. Try to kick. Maybe miss the five, miss the six ball, and then send the five ball here, and then put the ball behind the six. If I hit it right. Okay. Oh, got a funny bounce from the rail. I might have had some English on it or something. In theory, it was good. Okay, a little fast on the back stroke. This is tough here. Frozen on the back rail. And, uh, you know, I only have a choice. I don't have a Really, a draw choice here because I'm so close to the rail. Either I have to like fire with a lot of uh, force follow, or maybe I could play a cross bank. I think the benefits of the cross bank, you know, if I can avoid the double kiss, is that the nine is there and I put a little bit less spin on the cue ball, I can maybe keep the nine at the same time. So, 
So, and if it doesn't go, I still get position on the sixth. So, looking at all these things, I think that's in this situation the best shot. Oh, so far. I'm a little bit worried about the double fits actually. Everybody follow me here? Yeah. <laughs> I have to look a little bit in, inside English. You know, in this case, that's left English. I'm so far away, and if you elevate the back, if you elevate the back of the cue just a little bit, it's going to uh, turn into a mass A shot. So you have to be really careful when you're hitting a uh, spin from the rail. But naturally, you, just, you tend to like uh, elevate a little bit just to get more contact on the cue ball. So now, if I elevate and want to put a little English, but the double fist side, I almost have to aim to miss the ball, but then it'll, it'll uh, change the path a little bit because of the Massé effect. And that may, might make me change my mind about this shot. So, uh, uh, well, I'm going to try. Oh, I didn't get enough juice on <coughs> A little bit more left than I would have been, you know. Pretty good. It's a good one pocket shot. Yeah, and that's a good one pocket shot. It's, you know, if I hit the nine, it's a bit too late. You know, yeah. I get a little bit, a little bit of a safety too. If uh, somebody has like little questions, I can take some questions now, but you know the, the bulk of the questions uh, were after this introductory. So yeah, just uh, if I say something that doesn't quite ring the bell, you know, maybe you can ask me the question. So far, so good. <laughs> <laughs> He's already warmed up. He's been playing all day. Do you have a preference on chalk? Uh, yeah. Um, I use I use Kamui <coughs> as kind of a base, and then if I have to spin them, I have to play, them, I have to play a, a lot of uh, action on the ball, then I, I use it. Regular shots I have is a little bit faster. Sometimes I find that people annoy all the time. Get some bad contacts on the balls. Clean the balls. Well, in my experience, I've you know had a few situations where I discussed it with the you know, people. Too. Oh no, it's just a give and, give and take, I guess. You know, you get a lot of, Some people don't. get a lot of grip, but then, you know. A little YouTube. Hey, just giving me a chance. <laughs> it felt bad. Mercy is a disease. <laughs> <laughs> I won't let 
Just a small draw, there's a little bit of a long rail, left English. Approach the five. Uh, play it, play here, just leave an angle where I can play all the way here. And it's easier to get on the eighth one here. So, it's kind of take a bit there, so. Uh, lots of years <coughs> on the short side. Yeah, that's more simple. You can see more. I'm just going to play it here, get a little bit short so I get the angles come back up. <coughs> And now I can bounce. Got two options. I can play top spin on this side, but I kind of like bouncing just a stun shot and then using these two rails. <laughs> just where I want to. 
know, uh, this situation is funny because a lot of players, when they play the last ball, they just think, that, oh, it's the last ball. But I, I kind of tend to give it a little bit more respect and say, I'm going to play position of this ball into an area. So just playing position kind of reaffirms in your mind what you're doing with the cue ball. So uh, this way, when you think of the cue ball as well, it makes the shot itself more accurate. So the more information you get to your brain about the shot, the more likely you're going to make it. So uh, even if it was just like a roll shot or something, I, I try to think about what's happening to the cue ball. And this way, you know, you avoid some some silly scratches or something that tend to happen sometimes if you don't think about it. So just eliminate those and uh, play like any other shot. We always play in position, so it's just playing position. I tend to like think about the angle more. Close to the side. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it was a stop shot, I think about it. This is my suggestion. I'm just going to mark the cue ball right there. And just uh, reaffirm what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, I can always get another. Yeah, yeah. Last time it went to the right. Right. I focus more on the point. I have an expression, the cue ball never lies. So you can learn about what you're doing, you know, uh, depending on what's happening to the cue ball. You know, even on regular shots, not on the break shot. So uh, always get feedback from it, so you're getting more accustomed to yeah. that table that you're playing on. Every, every table plays a little bit different, so you always have to get used to different conditions. But, so uh again about you know let's Looking at the feedback from the cue ball, uh, generally speaking, if you miss a ball about play position, if you get position, it's not really a great consolation because had you made the ball, the cue ball would have taken a different path, and would have had a different amount of energy left on it after touching it off the ball, and then uh, therefore you would miss the position. So sometimes when you miss a ball and miss position, it's, it's natural because. You didn't take the line that you intended to take. But you can read from the cue ball, like, had you made that shot, would that energy would be not sufficient, or the spin was good, and everything was okay. So you want to kind of learn all the time what's happening and keep getting feedback from the table. And so, use it like a stun shot again, just, just to take that certain angle and come out here. Use two rails and go into the direction of the sun. Correct angle. I don't think I had any stun on that. Again, getting used to the table. I should have put a little bit more information on the ball. Thank you. 
device is still there where you want to go. So it's good visualization. Some new things today already? Executing is different. Execution is real power. <laughs> Just gotta, you know, hold your skills. I'm gonna play safe here. I don't have a good, uh, I don't have a good offensive solution. I'm gonna try to get behind the nine and then. The one ball. Margins, you know, you have four and six there. I have the nine, I have like three balls that I can go behind. Like walking the ideal path. Maybe I'll try to get straight, you know, and then draw back. That'd be the most simple thing. Short. Okay. I can play on this side, but then. I really don't like the corner pocket here, and I don't like the eight ball there. There's a lot of bad things that can happen. So another option is to use the back rail and kind of play like a fourth ball. And uh, the speed is like, you know, you could be going towards the corner, so you try to play the speed where even if it does go towards the corner, you can stop it for them. Leave an angle for yourself. It's a little tricky. Okay, straight on. And shorts. It's a really good path. So 
So again, you know, not too disappointed. Just learning something from the speed that's stable line. So I can cut this ball in with much razor. And uh, I'm losing the cue ball. I'm trying to cut it in. Oh, he wants to see it. Yeah. Slice it in. Slice it in. Slice it in. <laughs> I think there's another option. Do what you do. Do you Wow. Wow. That ball. Wow. 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 So I'm going to play another uh, stun with a little, little draw. They hit it kind of hard so the draw doesn't grab too quick. If I hit it <coughs> soft, I'm going to scratch from the side. So the harder you hit, the longer the cue ball stays on the tangent line. So if I hit harder, I can kind of beat the scratch. And the draw will grab a little bit later. And, you know, the way it's talking, it's tough to come kind of with those, but I'm getting used to it, I guess. And now, um, just play the soft, I got a pretty good angle if I come off the rail a little bit. And I'm just going to want to risk it. Just play, keep it simple. I'm going to go straight up. Another option would have been like using these rails, but it's going towards the corner. And like that. The third option is going here and then go a little bit long, which is probably the best option. Almost. Just try to pinpoint position for yourself, and then that way you learn more so you feedback the way you're hitting the ball. Too much <coughs> so I'm going to go here. <laughs> Is that fun so far? Feel free to ask any questions while they're bracket. Do you remember the one third that you scratched off the one ball? You said you hit a little bit off on point. What point were you talking about? The oh, the, 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 the break shot? Yes. Yeah, I hit it a little bit to the right of the one, That's so the one. it okay. kind of just deflected. I was off on the aim. Now, on your key ball, are you hitting the top or center? I'm hitting center, but it's going to turn into a little bit of top because, you know, it gets a a little bit of friction off the impact. Or like you just, you know, it's leaving like, you know, 25 miles at, at the surface. So it gets a little rotation from there. But a um, lot of people don't actually know that the cue ball becomes airborne. And so if you, um, if you hit it really hard, sometimes you get to land on that one ball. So I don't know. So then sometimes you, you hit it even harder. It might take a bounce of the you know, somewhere in the middle. You said there's a little track here, because people break it from the side, and that's where it takes the first bounce. Sometimes, you know, in the second bounce, it hits, it hits the one ball at a little bit of angle. That's why you get the, your cue balls up in the air. But you're trying to get straight? Yeah, one straight on from here. Whatever angle I choose, I usually try to hit it straight on. What happens if you hit the eight there with a little bit left for setting up? The last eight you hit. Yeah. 
what happens if you make it to the little and top left? Top left. Uh, I, yeah, I could have straight went straight up. Like that. that was my one of the options to play position. But then I chose this one. I was a little bit more comfortable. Just, yeah, it was engaging, easier, tangent lines with a little spin. <coughs> get the direction. And sometimes when you put top left, you get a little bit too much. And it's a different uh, kind of feel. And now I'm not. I'm still kind of getting used to the table, so I played it the safer way. And you know, let's say if I put an hour into the table, maybe I will play that shot. Just get a little bit more feel. How it's how it's reacting off the rails. So I played it percentage percentage wise. My cue ball is getting better. I got like less action on the cue ball this time, which is good. You want to keep the cue ball solid. And it was coming towards here. I still want to like make it bounce straight back, which is like you know the best uh, control. For lower rank players, that is more of an advantage to break from the middle or from the side. From the side. From the side always. Yeah. And some other games, not so much. So you can still, even in eight ball, you can still make the one in the side. But I'd say in nine ball, it's like a, it's a good rack, but one ball is a, it's a hanger. Hanger means it's like, it's in. Now, uh, I like the five there, it's kind of protecting me from scratching, so no, no matter how I come over here, it's, there's no scratch. <laughs> I'm thinking no. I want to be more accurate and either put more power and stun get on this side or on between. The between is a little tricky because if I hit the nine on the scratch of that or the nine can block the two. So I'm thinking that maybe it's better to go over there and it's safe and I'm not like interfering with the, the big picture. And I you know, always Nanball, generally speaking, is always good to have a little bit of angle to work with, unless it's a simple stop shot position. So, stun across here. <coughs> the left room, the draw. And that's the shot. I overcut the one. So, I have too much action on it anyway. The real first? This is, yeah, I like, I kind of like the real first. Um, yeah, I, I think you're going to go long. But there's a good, there's a good track here. If you hit it right, you know, go between the, these balls here. Or maybe hit the nine. Uh, yeah, I like it. I'll just try to visualize again. This is the playing surface. <laughs> if I was you, I would come here and check where, how full you want. It's the one. I'm just saying. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just really not. <laughs> <laughs> but think of the track, you know, it has that track there where it's going to hit. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's good to have a look there. And now, he's, well, the next time he's going to go closer to the ball, he has an idea you know, what's happening. He changed a little bit. A five ball came here, so that changes my positional thinking a little bit. Makes it tougher to play shape when we don't have all this big area here. I might opt to it, actually, go to the short side. Let's just see if this. Well, about there. And get a nice bounce here. <coughs> Just happens to be safer. Oh, 
control of the broad suite. How else was going to work? This is the side part. Get a nice natural bounce. The side wall. Follow with a left hand as you go by. A little bit. That's a natural angle. Go C8. Now, I don't want to get straight on the A, so I'm just going to, instead of just playing it a regular dead weight roll, a little bit spin so I can manipulate the angle on the other rail. Oh, it's still there. 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 It's hanging in the corner from the side. So I can get pretty much anywhere in the free. But ideally it's here. So you can just slide slide down. So uh, I'm going to hit in the knife. The two wheels together. Up there. No, I just want to leave an angle on the side. A little better. Okay. 
just turn it off. I'm a little bit full, so that's why I brought the nine. <coughs> Spin off the back rail, right English, and then hit the rail here. Of course, not. That's it. Oh, the eight so thin. Anyway, like position here. I'm going to visualize the cue ball. There. <coughs> More information about the shot. Perfect. All right. I think what we do now is the QA. Yeah. Okay. All right. So if you guys remember what we did last time. We're doing a Google Hangout. We've actually been already kind of broadcasting it, so it'll be on our YouTube page. So later on, you can always go to Billiard Factory's YouTube channel and watch everything that you just saw. It'll be there on there for you to look at. So make sure I'm going to have you kind of sit right here, or up against the table. The camera's there. You can you don't have to look into it, but that way yeah. if somebody's watching, they'll see. As far as the yeah. second clinic, uh, is it uh, sold out or? Second clinic. Oh yeah, I'm going to talk about that in a second, okay. but. You guys know we're doing a, a clinic tomorrow uh, with Mika from 9 to 4. There's a, one spot available because somebody would like to move to the second clinic. Uh, so if anybody's interested, there's one spot open for tomorrow. And then we have a clinic on uh, next Sunday from noon until 6.30 or 7, depending on how long the break to eat for. Uh, there's still four or five spots left for that. Uh,